All right, so Vesiyat Rishmaya, we're taking the next step on our journey in the Inner Dimension of Shabbos series, the 37th year, Hashem's help. And after many, many, many weeks and many months delving into the depth of Anabakoyach, we are now taking the next step with Hashem's help into Lichadodi. So, Lichadodi, and we're going to get into some of this, Be'ezrus Hashem, and the sources as well. Thanks for coming. Um, we're going to get into the into the sources, but is is more of a uh, more of a recent innovation in terms of our liturgy, generally speaking. So much so that there were those that opposed its inclusion into the Siddur. Um The 1500s of Shlomo Alkabitz, one of the great Mikubalim of Tzvat at that time, who um, was kicked out of his land, estranged. Um, in in, uh, in 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 the 1490s, by the the Inquisition at that time, and he came to Tzfas along with many of the other Mikubalim, um, which we're going to read about. The Ramak, his brother-in-law, Moshe Kudavero, at that, that time, a little bit later, it was the Ariyah Kadesh, next generation, the Beis Yosef, um, Rav Moshe Alshech. We have no idea. We can't be massive. What was going on in those little narrow twisted alleyways of Tzvas. And, uh, you know, the city still is infused with that vibe, with that energy of these great tzaddikim. So Shlaim al Kabitz wrote this Piyot Lechadodi, as we're going to see. Take a look. Uh, you don't actually have it in front of you, but the first four stanzas spell his name, Shlomo, um, Shamar, Likras, Mikdash, and Isnari. And then the next four spell Halevi. So he encoded his name, Shlaim Halevi al Kabitz, into the Piyot. And how beautiful that he wrote a Piyot. Uh, that's a song, and he was a levy. So it's Mamash, a, a beautiful, beautiful um, piyot, and there's plenty to delve into. Unlike Anabakayach, we're not going to be taking it stanza by stanza to you know to, to take it apart, but there are a few mamarim and different sfarim that speak about the Indian of L'chadayi Bechlal um, in a more general way, and that's what we're going to be focusing on all um, the Siyat Rishmaya. So before anything, um, I couldn't find a good way to fit it all into one page. The, the L'chadaydi would have been many pages, but all of us know it and are familiar with it. I just want to read through it and translate it first, um, which I think is important. Before we dive into some of the deeper understandings of what this piyat is, what its meanings are, um, and what it and what it represents for, for all of us. Okay, so first we're just going to read and translate. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you. And and then we'll get into some of the uh, some of the deeper understandings. Okay, so Lichadoidi Likras Kala, come or, or let us go, my beloved Likras Kala, toward the bride, Pene Shabbos Nikabla, let us receive and accept the incoming Shabbos. Shama Razach Bidibor Echad, we speak about Shabbos, where Akadosh Baruch Hu, Bidibor Echad, in one word which is impossible, said two words, Shamar, guard Shabbos, Zachar, remember Shabbos, Hishmi Anu Kel Hamiyuchad, Akadosh Baruch Hu, the one and only Kel. The one and only divine power, who, as we learned, is one and only, not just in the sense of there not being others, but in the sense of there being nothing other than, right? Like we learned in Anabakaif about Yachid, 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 Yachid Geya. Kel HaMiyuchad, the Yachid, the Miyuchad, the only one. Hashem Echad, and in that sense, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is one. Ushmoi Echad, and all of nature. We're going to learn all about this deeply. We already touched on many of these ideas earlier, but it's good to review and see things um, in, in new ways and from new angles. Really, all of Tyre and Mitzvahs is the same ideas, and they're just encoded in different mitzvahs, in different minhagim, in different psukim, in different, in different you know, aspects to, to allow us to really, really, you know, inculcate all of these ideas into the deepest part of our psyche and, and being on every level. So it's the same ideas that are going to keep coming up, but they're the foundations of what it means to be a Jew. The foundation of what we need to bring to the whole world, um, as we're going to continue to, to explore. So Hashem Echad, Hashem is one, Ushmoi, which is always usually a, a connotation, a, a, a reference rather, um, to the Shem Elohim, which as we know is Gematria, Hateva, nature, Ushma, Hashem Echad, Ushmoi Echad. Everything, both the essence, so to speak, of Hashem in and of Himself, itself, whatever, whatever that is, the divine mystery, just beingness, nothingness from our perspective, the ayin, and beyond that, and all of the gilui, which is 
from Hashem's perspective, Hester. The concealment of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in Elikim, Midas Hadin, that, that, that element that hides Hashem, it's all Echad, it's all Echad. L'Shem U'L'Siferes V'L'Sihila. Um, and in that, in, that, in that sense, it is something to be proclaimed as a, as a, as a, as a shame. Right? Thank you so much for coming. As a shame, Ulusiferes, and with glory, splendor, Ulusila, and praise. And again, the Chadari is repeated. The third stanza, thank you guys so much for coming. And we're just starting, huh? Uh, well, yes, I mean, if you include the Chadari as the first. So, yes, but really the second stanza, thank you. Um, we're just reading and translating the Chadari before we take a look at the sources. Likra Shabbos Elcha, let us go, let us go out toward Shabbos. Lechu, we shall go v'nelcha, and we shall go together. Ki himikar habracha, because Shabbos is the source of all bracha, of all blessing. Ordinarily how we translate it, but of course all these things mean much deeper things, and we're going to get into it in the course of our learning. Mi roish mi kedem nesucha, from the earliest, earliest stages of, of creation. Mi roish. From the from the source, you don't have it. On, I'm just reading and, and translating. Hopefully, we have it in our in our head and in our heart. Meroish mikedem from the earliest earliest days. Nesucha, she was crowned, was appointed. Soif masa b'machshava techila, the very end of creation. Obviously, a reference to Shabbos, where creation was culminated, was b'machshava techila, was rooted in the earliest stage of the divine plan of the of the thinking. So, what comes last? In action means that it was rooted first in the divine concept of what this thing was supposed to look like. And then Hashem went through the process of creating the world until it was complete. And that's called Shabbos. Mikdash Melech Ir Malucha. This is the, uh, the, the third stanza. Again, it spells his name, Shlomo al Kabit, Shlomo Halevi. So this is the mem of Shlomo. Mikdash Melech Ir Malucha. The Sanctuary of the king, Ir Malucha, in the city of his kingdom. Kumi tzi'i mitoy ha'afecha, arise from the, from the turbulence, from the turmoil. Ha'afecha, like we have been a hapach, where everything is turned upside down. Rav lach sheves ve'emek ha'bacha. How long? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Shechina, we're going to learn what the, the deeper meaning, is sitting ve'emek ha'bacha in the, in the valley of tears. Such evocative language. But but who, which is the 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 chasen, will will He's is ready to have mercy on you. He's ready to save you. And again, the chadoidi lekraskala. And then we and then we end this first section of the chadoidi, which is the end of the name Shloima, and that's what we're going to learn. Many have the minute to change the tune at this stage, and one of the reasons is it demarcates between Shloima and Halevi. So that, right, that there's, a, there's a fundamental split built into the chadoidi in the sense that the first four letters spell one name, and then the second or the first four stanzas, and then the second four stanzas spell Halevi. So over here, this is the last. Uh, uh, stanza in this first set of four. His nari me afar kumi. I'm sorry. Um, yes, his nari me afar kumi. Thanks for coming. Um, shake off the dust and arise. Live she big day sefartech ami. Wear big day sefartech ami. The the clothing of glory. Ayad ben Yishai be salachmi. Of course, a reference to David Amelech, the Ben of Yishai, the son of Yishai, Beis Halachmi, who comes from Beis Lechem. Karva el Nafshi, draw close to Nafshi. It's paraphrasing a passing in Tehillim. Come close to my soul, Ga'ala, and redeem her. Again, the, you're right. Generally speaking, as well some faces, generally speaking, the Minog is to change after Hisairi, Hisairi. But there were those who had the Minog. I think in Breslov, if I'm not mistaken, the Minog is to change it one stanza earlier for that reason of demarcating. We're going to learn another reason for our Minog to change it after Hisairi uh, in the notes. But there is such a Minog to, to, to split it up because, again, it's, it's fundamentally split up that way. And then we say Hisairi, Hisairi, awaken, awaken. Kiva oirech, kumi oiri. Kiva oirech, because the, the light has come, the light has arrived. Kumi oiri, wake up, arise. Uri, uri, what's that? Oiri, shine. Yes, uh, yes, kumi oiri, exactly, awaken and shine. Kiva oirech, the light has arrived. Uri, uri, shir daberi. And let it be awakened, the shir daberi, the song of my mouth. Or you can read it, Uri Uri, awake, awake, Shir Daberi, two ways of reading it. Let my let my mouth, let my words, let them sing. Kfoira Shem Alaych Nigla. 
in this moment, the presence of the divine, the glory of Hashem, Alayich Nigla, is becoming revealed upon you. We're going to get into to what this means. In a, in a very simple way, it's talking about Am Yisra, In a very simple way. In a broader way, it's talking about all of creation, the sphere of Malchus, um, the, the Shem Elohim that we reference being now one with Hashem, just like Shamar and Zachar are one. It's All the symbolism is built in and runs through each and every stanza. We're going to get to all of this. But as is Hashem, Alayich Nikla. Then we move into the second half of L'chadoidi in, in a more general uh, sense. Do not be ashamed. Do not be embarrassed. Why should you be all bent over? Why should you moan and, 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 and cry? In you is going to take refuge the ani ami the pover the the, the the those who are who are impoverished of our nation the nimna sa'ir altila it's time to rebuild it's time to rebuild the city altila on it on the hill vahilim shisa shaysayich and then vahilim shisa those who came to plunder you shaysayich they will be the ones who who you will plunder the rachaku kolm v'alayich whoever wants to come and swallow you up the rachaku those will be distant and then Hashem will rejoice, your God will rejoice upon you, like a, like a, bride, like a groom, like a chasin is taking joy in, in the kala. And then you'll spread out to the right, to the left. That's Hashem Ta'aritzi, you will adore, you will uplift Hashem, you will, you will fear and, 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 uh, and what's, the, what's the word, like ne'erat, um, exalt, yeah? I think exalt is the right word. Hashem. Ayad Ish Ben Parsi, another reference to David Amalach, who's called Ben Parsi, who's pirates, breaks all boundaries, Venismachav and Agila, and then there will be great rejoicing. And we finish Boy Bishalim Ataraspala. Come in peace. Ataraspala, the, the crown of your Baal, your husband, Gambarina, Utsahala, with rejoicing and, and song. Toichemune Am Sugula. Amidst the faithful, Am Segula, Hashem's treasured nation, Bayichala, Bayichala, come enter, bride, Bayichala, the bride should enter. This is just the translation of Lechadaydi. So it should be clear to me and you that there is infinite meaning and depth in the choice of words, in the order of words, in the symbols. Each and every stanza is incredibly, incredibly deep. Another, you know, piyot, it's something similar to Anabakayach. Anabakayach, of course, is much, much, much earlier. But both of them were, were, were you know, there's not just poetry, right? Poetry in and of itself could be very beautiful. It's a beautiful way of expressing. But when it's poetry written by Mikubalim, there's a much deeper element there. It's, it's not just a form of, of you know, of, of storytelling or, or, you know, whatever, however poetry is defined. It's much deeper. It becomes Mamish Kabbalah. You know, it becomes something where every word and the choice of words and the symbol of the words and the themes, etc., is is incredibly, incredibly deep. So we're the Ezra Hashem. The next couple of weeks, we're going to be delving uh, into this. Okay, so now let's take a look um, into the sources. And this first source is from a sefer called Bayam Darkecha. These it was put together by a Talmud of a Rich Meyer Morgenstern, and it's his. Uh, teachings. So that the, the first sefer by Amdar Kecha is on various avodas, uh, the avodah of eating, avas Hashem, yiras Hashem, and so on. It goes by topic. And then there's a whole other sefer that came out subsequently, um, just on Shabbos. And interestingly enough, this is all he has on the Chadayi, just as t- like a tiny bit. So I, I figured let's start with that. We'll get that out of the way, so to speak. You know, the, the whole Bayam Darkecha's entry on the Chadaydi, and then we're going to move into Rav Kluger, who has a couple of very deep mamarim on it, or Rav Ram Sui Kluger, um, and then we'll see where, where the journey will take us next. All the Siyat Rishmaya. So here he begins. There is the Hanhaga, the Minhag, that became pretty widespread, almost completely universal, to say the Piyat Lechadaydi. In a most fundamental or general sense, this piyot speaks about the praise of Shabbos. And if you take a look, we just took a look at the theme, it really speaks al getting out of darkness, right? 
Rav Lech Sheves Be'enek HaBacha, right? Um, um, shake off the dust. Kumi Oiri. Uri, Uri, Shir Daberi. We speak about waking up. Why? Because thematically, this is precisely what Shabbos presents in terms of the opportunity. Kika Ace, at these moments, on a Yoytze Mechoshech Shalimoy Sachal, we have the opportunity to exit the darkness of the weekday. With all of what that is, Vahastaras Haklipas, with the potential concealment of all external forces, all forces that divide us away from what Shabbos is and what Shabbos represents, Hashem's presence, the light of Emuna, the realization that the world was created, that it's not Olam Kim and Hagwa Kanoyek just on its own, which we can easily slip into during the week. So we're waking up. El Or Ha'amiti Shal Shabbos Kodesh. We're about to wake up to that great light, to that great true light that is Shabbos. And so we refer to the, the exit of not just Am Yisrael, right? Waking up from the experience of slumber during the six days of the week, but the Shekhinah, the indwelling presence of the divine, which of course is encapsulated within the collective soul of the Jewish nation. I have a spark of the Shekhinah. We all, each one of us, have a spark of the Shekhinah within, but it's more broad than that. Because all of nature, in a certain sense, contains sparks of the Shekhinah, meaning potential uh, encounters with the divine and we it's like almost like magnet like a magnet we with our shina so to speak inside of us which is the chelikalokamimal coming down into the lower realm if we are jewish enough meaning if we're, if we're mamish living like yidin so everything we come into contact with it's like a magnet it it it, it draws that it draws that spark out now the archaim akadosh says that it didn't have to be this way fundamentally in a time of gu'ula Am Yisrael are in Yerushalayim, and the magnet is so strong that from that place we bring we bring all of the sparks to, to Yerushalayim. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't we don't have to go into exile. But what happens to a magnet when the magnet is splintered? Kepatish he fights its cella, like the pasuk says, like a hammer splinters a rock, and a magnet splits into a million pieces. What's going to happen to the the magnet? Obviously, each and every piece is going to it become much weaker. Much, much weaker. Says the Arachayim HaKadosh, that's the deep side of what it means that because of Sinas Chinam, the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed and we have to go into Galas. When we are a unified people, the magnetism is so strong, we stay in one place in the world and we draw all of Elikus to us. It's so clear that there's a God in the world that nobody in Australia is encountering a, a, a drink of water and not remembering that this is Mahmash, an experience of the divine. That this water is, is, is Hashem's midah of chesed, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, corporealized as it was. That this is Mahmash, this comes from the code of the divine. Because it's clear there's a Jewish nation in the world. There's a Mikdash, there's Karbanas. It's obvious to the kol ba'i oilam. But when there's sinas chinam, what happens? There's disunity. The magnet loses an impact. Each and every piece of the magnet now needs to go into exile in order to experience all different places in the world, all different aspects of the human experience, to encounter every, every, every element of creation and to, and to elevate it by engaging with it through the framework of halacha. That's how the Archaim explains what it is that we're doing in exile. As the Gemara tells us, Am Yisrael didn't go into exile only to be ma'asev geirim, right? to, 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 to gather um, um, geirim. And we don't, we don't make geirim, right? At least we don't try to make geirim. We're not a proselytizing people, which is fascinating. There's a philosophical, um, at least in political philosophy, there's a, there's a shita that, that, um, that, 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 that uh, if, if it's a good policy, you don't need to force anybody to do it. There's this idea that if you just allow people to, to you, you just allow people to choose, that itself will be the test. Thanks for coming. That itself will be the test as to whether it's a good policy. If you have to for, if you're if fascism, communism, if you have to force something on other people, that already means that like it had no hope of standing in terms of the broad consensus of what human beings actually need or want. And that's a very deep thing that Am Yisrael, because of our MS, we we never needed to force anything. We never tried to force anybody to do anything. That's it's not in our that's not in our in our uh, in our in our 
philosophy or theology. So, so what does it? What does Chazal mean? We went into exile to gather Gerim. Says that Rizal. What does it mean? Gerim is a reference to the sparks, to the sparks of kedusha. We go into Gullus, and it's very deep this, because whatever happens on the macrocosm of Am Yisrael as a whole happens to each of us in our own personal Gullus. Meaning when we become fragmented as people, when we fall out of Shabbos and into the days of the week, when we fall into Yeridus of Amun and so on and so forth, there's an avoid there. And in the same way that Am Yisrael went into Gullus to gather sparks, there are sparks in that place. That, that's, that's the Baal Shem Tov's doctrine of Yerida is somehow Litzarech Aliyah. It means, obviously, we do our best and we do our best and we try more B'nai Aliyah and we strive and we want to be as, as Kaddish and as Tar as we can. When life will push you into places as it invariably does, Ein Sadik Ba'aretz HaShiyasa Toiv V'Layechta, that's a fact, right? So in the same way that for the Umasa, uh, I'm sorry, for Am Yisrael as a whole, we became fragmented for the purpose of going into the, na- the lands of the nations of the world to be able to extract sparks, to be able to recognize HaKadosh Baruch Hu even there. And in so doing, we're drawing out sparks. We're Ma'asif Geirim in a sense. Says the, so the Baal Shem Tev took this idea from Nari, which is based on Chazal, and, and, and he applied it to each and every individual. Because each and every one of us is a microcosm of Am Yisrael. And in our own inner world, we go into Gullus. And when we go into Gullus, if we go with this mindset, there's an avoid for you to do over there. And that's where Nachman's whole thing. That's called Baki Bishayv. That's the whole doctrine of Breslov. And even when a person finds himself in that place, there's an avoid there. You're not there for arbitrarily. Now that you're there, okay, is it ideal? Halavai, we wouldn't be here. But now that you're there, al don't give up. And that's the, that's the avoid of the final generation when there's every reason under the sun to just give up, to go to bed and not to come out. I mean, there's literally, I'm not going to start listing all the reasons now. But you understand, we're under threat of nuclear Armageddon, like we've never been closer. And if people were afraid of this in the Cold War, you understand, we're literally, in, in, you know, the instability of our times is, 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 is absolutely horrifying. Mitzad Echad. Mitzad Sheini. If we have a, a, a theology, a philosophy, if we, if we have a framework or a lens through which to look at everything that's happening, everything's going according to plan. Meaning to say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs us to, have an, to do an Avaidah here. What's the Avaidah? It's not to give up. Very simple. That's the Avaidah. To remember that even here, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's running the show. It's the whole story of, of, of the Megillah. It's the, literally the whole message of Purim. Megillah's Esther, to be Megala HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Daiko within the Hester. So this is what the Arizal says, that um, that uh, based again based on Chazal, Chazal say that a Jew is not allowed halachically to go and live in Egypt, right? Even to go back to Egypt. Certain halachic uh, uh, conditions that do apply. The Rambam himself lived in lived in Egypt, but generally speaking, you don't don't go back to live in Mitzrayim. So, what's that? There's Pesach programs in Mitzrayim. Yeah, Pesach program. Yeah, now there's Pesach programs. Right, but but so fundamentally, why is that? Like, why can't a Jew go back to live in Mitzrayim? What's so terrible? It says that Ria Kadosh al Pipnimius, because the pasuk tells us Vayinatzlus Mitzrayim. We probably said this in the past. What does it mean Vayinatzlus Mitzrayim? They cleaned out Egypt. What does it mean on a literal level? Does it mean they cleaned out Egypt? It's a pasuk. They took all the riches. Remember, they went around Makas Choyshech. They asked everybody. They they saw where all the gold was, and then they asked them to to you know to, to and people came and they they just gave all the Egyptians gave. All of their gold and silver. So that's what it means, Apip Shat. But says the Ariyah Kadesh, if Am Yisrael are in Gullus in a place, they're not there arbitrarily. We're not living in London for however many hundreds of years the Jewish community, Yekish or, or, Yekish or otherwise, has been living here. Not, that's not Stam. There's a, there's a void there's to do here. Once it becomes clear that Am Yisrael are being moved out of that exile, Vayinatsuas Mitzrayim means that there's no more sparks in that place. It's been Mitukan. That area of the Olam Agashmi has been has been elevated. It's hard for us to understand this because uh, because in terms of the the lived experience of Egypt, it's it's not clear that there's anything different. You know, fundamentally, maybe it's worse there, at a, you know, than, than any other place. But Al Pipnimius in the inner dimension of reality, Mitzrayim, check, could be argued Europe. You know, meaning meaning outside of, of England, Germany, Poland, Russia, Ukraine, and so on. Czech, either still you did living there, and a Hanami. But it was pretty clear that a Kaddish Baruch Hu closed that that chapter, right, of of, of that segment of, of Jewish history. Um, 
Now the question is how much how much more time we have, you know, in 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 the last gullus, you know, edaim of the states and and England. Some might argue that that chapter is very steadily reaching its 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 uh, finale as well. Hashem should should protect all of us. It should be with Rachamim. It should be with Rachamim and, and our Gadol. But ultimately, when Jews move from one place to the next, you could take a look at the Meshachachma, I believe, in, in Parshish Veschanan, I think. He says over there, Mama, she says this straight out. This is how Jewish history works. Like it or love it. This is the fact. Hashem is being manhigas from place to place because we have avoidas in, in, in each and every place. So that's the Shechina in everything. And it's fascinating. The Shechina that is within us is intended to be, like I said, a magnet for the sparks of the Shechina that are, that are in all of nature. And if we can engage with the world through the framework of Halacha, which is exactly what, what it's supposed to be, through the framework of Halacha to, to encounter things in a God-conscious way, we're lifting up all the sparks. We're lifting up all the sparks. So this is what's happening on Shabbos. Let's go back inside of Maskirim es Yitzias Hashchina Hakadoshah Begalas. We're remembering that at that time we're mentioning, we're making reference that the Shechina now is coming out of Galas. Oh my gosh, is the Shechina in Galas during the six days of the week. It's so hard to find Hashem in the mundane. It's, it's so difficult. It's so challenging. But on Shabbos, depends who you're with on Shabbos, depends how you approach Shabbos, but hopefully <laughs> on Shabbos, so it's a different reality. And the Shechina is coming out of exile. This is what we mean. We make reference. Come, arise out of the hafecha. Meaning that your magnet is, so to speak, stronger on Shabbos. It's like removed from its sheath. To some Our magnet is stronger. And Mimela, all of nature, has the opportunity of being approached in a deeper way. And, and that is the Yitzia of the Shechina. That is the elevation of the sparks. Because it's Tali on us. So... Dirt on Shabbos simply as a day off from work. I mean, on the most literal, literal level, just simply not being you used to be. Everyone was laborers. They were very, very magusham. <laughs> Today we think we're less magusham. We sit on laptops, you know. But it, but you're still we're still involved in in, in the oil and gashmi. But different people have different different. You know, every everybody to one degree or another, whether it's still physical labor, manual labor, whether whether it's what whatever whatever kind of labor it is, Shabbos comes, and and we're not in that mitzvahs anymore. Meaning we're leaving the oil and gashmi behind. Now we're coming into the world of Ruchanis. Our magnet, Mamela, gets stronger. And so and so it's so much easier by a Shabbos Suda. And again, all mysticism aside, just by the fact that this is a Shabbos Suda. It's not that at a regular feast of what's the evening. It's not dinner. It always I call it a Shabbos dinner. It's not, it's not dinner. It's not it, it's not dinner. Dinner implies that it that that it's night. It's night and you and you eat dinner. You know, not supposed to say good night on Shabbos. Not there's no night. You say good Shabbos. Not a dinner. It's a suda. It's a feast. I have dinner on Tuesday night. I don't have a suda on Tuesday night. It's a feast. So the grape juice that we're drinking, could you compare? Person happens to like grape juice. Let's say you drink some grape juice on Wednesday. You have a glass of wine with your dinner right on Monday night. A glass of wine. Can you compare the wine of Kiddush, the grape juice of Kiddush, to a you know person drinks some? It's it's not comparable. Why is that? Because something fundamental happened to our neshamas. We feel more 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 like Am Yisrael. We we feel at home. Memela, we can say that the Shechina is coming out of its exile. The minig is to sing. I saw just online a very interesting thing that in Kretschnev, uh, certain uh, Hasidas, their minig is so amazing was to sing L'chadaydi uh, 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 um, to the nigan of Akhtamas Milan that we use on Shavuos. L'chadaydi l'yikras kala p'nei Shabbos a'yine kava Isn't that interesting? Fascinating. Different minhagim, but it appears that the minhag was kavua. We're going to learn from Chaim Vital if we have time. Um, already in the time, the, the, the next generation, they were already singing it. The minhag is to sing it. Nigun, we already learned this. The minha, the, the nigun koicha gadol ma'oid. Nigun has tremendous power. We learned this in the context of Anabakayach when we were learning about um, 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 Karasatan. Um, Kabul Rinas. Thank you. Kabul Rinas Amcha. 
Nigun could awaken a person. So important to pick Nigunim for Lechadaydi that are that are Nigunei his Eirus. Kumei Shekasov, like the pasuk tells us, Vayihi Kim Nagin Hamanagin Matiyah Lav Ruach Hashem. When the when the Menagnim would come in front of Shaul, I believe over there is a reference to, but many of the Nevi'im, as the Ramam tells us, and Chazdeis, they used music, and when and when the music would play, open up new dimensions of the soul. So that's the that's the minog is to sing lechadaydi v'lechem bezman anigun. When we're singing it, melvad etzam amilim because there are different menagim. Some people sing the words of lechadaydi everybody together. Others there are two parts really to lechadaydi. They say the words and they sing the the nigun right. So he's saying melvad etzam amilim aside from the words, the nigun itself is boinin v'yadavik ba Hashem isbarach l'fi koychay. Each person should be misbonin. Each person should try to be. Contemplative of all of these ideas. What is the meaning of lechadidi? What is the opportunity of these moments when I'm no, I have nowhere to rush. I'm out of my doing mind and I'm in my being space. I'm just a yid. That's it, and I'm plugged in in this moment to the whole Jewish story from beginning of time to the end of time. Soif masib and I'm plugged into the allness of the Jewish enterprise. This mission of marching from exile to exile, and then Shabbos plugs us back in. Because the point of all of this is it's not just liturgy. It's not just something we recite. Again, it's a point we keep coming back to. It's meant to do something for us. It's meant to be a vehicle to take us somewhere else, not to be mindlessly you know, rattled off. It's supposed to take us somewhere. To help elevate our souls and to connect it, our souls to its source. Just parenthetically, um, there is a... Uh, Messiah from the Sar Shalom of Bells. A Messiah, I don't know where he saw it. Maybe he saw it from a, a, a Sefer. I don't know. Maybe it was passed down throughout the Dairas. That when Rav Shlema al Kabitz wrote Lechadaydi and instituted it as something that should be said, not just as a personal tefillah. And again, I don't want to say this and then people should feel pressured in any way. But this is my personal meaning as well. My father is very mocked about this as well. According to the Sar Shalom of Bells, he instituted that it should be said standing, Dafka. Dafka standing. And there are those, I think, tells, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Chabad, but Chabad stands for the whole, the thing, so it's not clear if it's Dafka about Lechadaydi. No? They stand for the whole Kabbalah Shabbos. Oh, really? It's interesting. So I saw that the Chabad stands the whole, the whole Kabbalah Shabbos, so they weren't sure whether it's Dafka Lechadaydi. But you're saying Lechadaydi for sure people stand. Okay. So Chabad, um, um, obviously bells, right, as, as this Messiah from the Sar Shalom. And so it's a, very, it's a very special thing. So I don't know, again, it's hard for me to say subjectively whether there's something I'm feeling that's objectively true. Like in, in my discomfort, the people sit. I don't know, because it's just, it's so much like, how, how could you sit? You know, it's like, you know, uh, especially, but can we, it's, it's you got to be standing. But, but try it. Try it and see if it changes the dynamic for you. I, I imagine that it might. Sitting is, you know, I don't know. There, there's something about standing. You're, you're more in it. You're more involved. You're, you're, you're. There, there's a, you know, the body doesn't just do something that doesn't have a hashpa on the neshama. If your body is standing, there's a, your, your deeper self is in a way awake. alert. Yeah, more, more awake. But I don't mean like because otherwise yeah. you'll fall asleep, <laughs> which usually is the case at the end of a long week. You know that people are anyway fashlift. But, but um, some people don't even wait for a couple of Shabbos. I'm even yelling, but anyway, no, but I, but I mean, I mean that if a person is is standing up, I don't mean awake. What what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, you're you're alert. You're 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 more open to the to what's what's taking place. You're more present. More receptive. It. More receptive. Yeah, more present. Um, so that's something that that I just thought that I'd mention, um, as well, particularly because the machaber who wrote it, he 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 coded it so to speak spiritually that it should be done this way. This was the takana. That it should be it should be said uh, standing, particularly if you're privileged enough to be at a minion where the mom is singing for real, like a kabach minion or something like that. Which, just by the way, I call you didim. If you're in the area, we do kabach every Friday night, and it's absolutely glorious. It really, really is. It's mom is beautiful. And again, Barav, um, right, Razami, you were there this past week. It's something special, mm -hmm. something special. So, so over there, I, I really don't understand people sitting, but uh, but <laughs> but anyway, you gotta stand there. You gotta stand. Okay. So there's a footnote, if you notice, um, Kuvchav Aleph. 
Oh, no, no, that, that footnote is something else. No, right in the beginning. Vihine Nahagu. Yeah, so there's that footnote, Kovcha. So turn the page over and you'll see um, where I, I just brought that footnote. And he says something really beautiful here. Again, I, everything is Dvarim Shutim. Like we're, it's, you know, basically, we're, we're just, we're opening the sugya. We're going to get into the deep stuff. We're very used to the Anabukayach. Like, the, you know, we're just Pasha Tayyid and we're, we're coming in s- slow. Um, but he says something very, very beautiful here that's important to keep in mind as well. Venoidai says it's known. Anything that's self-originated from Am Yisrael as a collective and also as a yachid. Without Hashem having mamish, you know, told us either in Tarshav Iksav or Tarshav Apeh. So he, he starts from obviously things that were instituted, Dafka the Chagim of of Pesa of of, uh, of Purim and Chanukah are extra, extra special. The Rambam doesn't use this lashon, right? Ner Chanukah Mitzvah Chaviva Adma Oid and, and so on. He doesn't say that about, about Pesach, which is a Diaraisa of a Diaraisa. Dafka Midrabanans and even Bechain Minhagim. Even Minhagim and Hanhagas. Yesh Bahem Chavivus Miuchadas. There is a very special uh, uh, preciousness that these things have by a Kurdish Baruch Hu. People take minhagim lightly. No, where does it stay? Where, you know, and on the, on, the, on the contrary, in a certain way, it's even deeper. Because what's a... Right, people say, no, a minhag. Minhag Yisrael Taira. Right, aside from the fact that there's a Bechina of Tarsha Peh that we should take very seriously, Anam Loi Nevi Imheim, Bnei Nevi Imheim, which is a very, very beautiful construct, because we have Hashem in us. So there's Tarsha B'Ksav and there's Tarsha Peh, and we can speak for a long time now on Tarsha Peh, which we're not going to do now. So, which is also very connected to Shabbos and the Shekhinah <coughs> and Am Yisrael v'chule. Aside from all of that, a minog means it's not sufficing to me just what's written. You know, to show it to me in a book. It's beyond that. It's, it's, it's here is something I'm doing and, and I'm, I'm giving extra of myself. So the question is, am I always trying to get out of things, you know, and then I have to ask myself why? And it could be that sometimes in a chanami, every person needs to be real with themselves. There are some chasidusin that are so f- f- full with minhagim, it drives people it drives people mad, really. And then the ikr becomes the tafel, the tafel becomes the ikr. And I don't need to tell you what they say facetiously about the letters of minhag that if you flip them around, spell something else, right? Um, give that a minute to sink in. Um, <laughs> You work it out afterwards with a pen and paper, but but no, you know. So it needs to be obviously. It needs to be coming from a place of of willingness. You remember what I said before? If it's a good svara, you don't need to force it. If it's a good svara, you don't need to force it. Um, and again, this is true politically, generally speaking, and it's true for education. True for education. If mamish the parents really believe in Yiddishkeit, don't have to force anything on anyone. So I have to force it, but 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 that's totally and contingent on how real it is to the parents and how much they believe and what they believe. Then you don't need a force. Same thing for school. Don't need a force. Shouldn't be shouldn't be forcing. Now enforcing consequences within a standpoint either of a home or of a school. Less brera of saying you can't have a free for all, and obviously there needs to be structure. But as a general mahalich, freedom of choice. As a general mahalich, and, and I could speak for a long time now on this, which I'm not going to, I'm just hinting to it. Um, but as a general mahalich, we have to imitate Hashem. We have to imitate Hashem. And Hashem gives us free choice. Hashem gives us free choice. There are consequences. There are consequences to not using our free choice properly. Built into the system are consequences. And there's a way of understanding that the consequences that we fear, vis-a-vis the life that we could be living, is the is the Avera itself. Schar mitzvah is the mitzvah, schar Avera is Avera. In a very deep way. It's not like I have to go to Gehenim somewhere else. I mean, meaning it's life. It's just, it's a, it's a memela consequence. It's built into the system. HaGadosh Baruch Hu wants us to have the best life in this world. If we engage with it in a healthy way. So there are consequences in a Hanami, but Hashem gives us Bechira. So we have to give our children and our students a degree of Bechira, space. Patience, space. And if we are living a Yiddish kind of health and non-coercion, it's, 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 it goes a whole lot better 
than when we try to force mamish. And this is baduk umanuse a billion times over. If anybody doesn't understand this or or still thinks opposite, they're they're, they're blind. They're blind to the mitzias of chinuch for sure in our times. For sure in our times. Um, and I'll say something else. And this is scary because we we. I heard this from a, a dear chaver of mine, and I think there's a, there's a scary degree of truth to it. We act toward others however we conceive of Hashem. Very scary mm-hmm. thing. Meaning to say, so ingrained in us is the mahalach of mahu afata, we're, we're supposed to emulate Hashem, we're supposed to be like Hashem, that the communities that have incredibly unhealthy perspectives of what God is, they end up becoming abusive husbands and abusive uh, whatever and 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 etc cetera, etc cetera. and this is a, this is a truism and it's a scary thing it's fascinating and generally speaking communities that have a broader deeper more more you know more more love oriented version of of what hashem is as our father as our friend as our as our as our soulmate etc generally speaking you don't find that 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 intensity so that's a, that's an interesting soci- sociological observation. Mm. Okay, everybody's trying their best. So min min hagim again when they're done in a healthy, normal, loving way. So it's so chaviv to Hashem because you went the extra mile, right? So that's what chasidus is. It means it means to go to go lefnimishur esadin. That's what a minig is. And the Gemara tells us, Hashem says to Am Yisrael, "Your friendship, your beloved, you are your um, your Yedidus, uh, uh, right? Doidecha, your love is is more more precious than Yayin." Say Chazal, Chavivin Divri Soifrim. The words of our sages, either in the, from the standpoint of Tarsha Balpeh, like Sanhedrin. And from the Tarkanas of, of Chazal and the Minhagim and the Hanhagas, especially ones like L'chadoidi, you know, love poems, Tarkadosh Baruch Hu, or, you know, etc., is more precious to Hashem, Yosir Miyena Shal Taira, more than the, than the wine of the Taira in and of itself. Why? Because this is how we demonstrate how much we are keen on a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that it didn't simply suffice for us to do what Hashem wants. If, uh, you know, just if a husband is treating a wife in such a way that we only do to the din, you know, just, just the minimum that we need to do, to, you know, that she shouldn't throw us out of the second floor window, you know, and, and take out the garbage just enough that we should still theoretically be in the category of being, you know, totally not a, not a, you know, a neglectful husband, and so on, knew, you know, knew what kind of relationship. But Kaval, the relationship, and it's true for husbands and wives, true for fathers and sons, it's, it's, it's true for friends. This is what a friend means, is to look after, out for someone beyond what you know you absolutely need to do fundamentally. It means to have them in mind when you're, you know, when, 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 when you're in a context that has nothing really to do with them, that they weren't expecting it. But you go beyond that show that is where the relationship is. That's really where the chavivus of the relationship is. And it, this is very, very deep. This is connected to the concept of engagement before marriage. In engagement, there, there is no expectation. There, there is not. There is no relationship on the level of expectation. So all there is in engagement is the extra stuff. It's the little letters. It's the gifts. It's the it's the projects. It's the going out of your way. It's the it, it's you know that that is what what it is because. That's the soul of the relationship. Marriage, things get complicated. Things get complicated. But to the extent that we carry on with all of those little things within the context of marriage, this is just a muscle. It makes no difference whether a person is in that matzah currently or not. This is, applies across the board to relationships, generally speaking. To the extent that a person within that framework, quote unquote, of, of marriage or the you know the official framework of the relationship, is still bringing in those elements, that's the heart and soul of the of the bond. That's the heart and soul of the bond. Maybe that's a connection to Adonis. That's Dafka the Chasna, mm. and and we bring along a minag of praise to Kodesh Baruch Hu. Gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful. So that you're saying there's a deep kesher between Akdamas. Um, which is all about the 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 the, the wedding of Harsinai. But it's a gift. It's and something you don't have to do. 
Oh, right, yeah. right. There's that, there's that minog aspect of it. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, and just a reminder to all of us, I'm really to myself, you know, kemai and panam al panam in relationships. I've seen this again and again and again. Really, it works. Kemai and panam al panam. Go out of our way to do these little things. It can, it can awaken that spark in the other and, and it becomes reciprocal and, and it can bring a relationship to life. Really can. So that's just a good uh, Shalom Bayes thing to, to remember. And again, not just in that context, but in all relationships, it makes no difference. In all relationships. And to the degree that we're going out of our way for the minhagim, so to speak, it, 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 it reawakens the heart and soul of that relationship. This shows us how much we want it beyond what we have to do. Right? We want to go the extra mile. And how much we rejoice in his Torah. Okay, let's just finish. We're just going to finish this page. Um, and then we'll start with the, the Mimer from Rav Kluger. We'll, do, we'll start that next week. The Mamarim are, are pretty long. We're going to try to go through them because they're really beautiful. And we'll, we'll see where it takes us, okay, week after week. But for now, let's finish this page. He says, in many places, Nehagim. We are noeg shebetchila menagnim nigan ma'ayra shal dveikos. For the first part of l'chadaydi, gazant in shtar, for the first part of l'chadaydi, generally speaking, the minig is to sing a slow nigan. And then we switch by l'ayse vayshi, but we sing a slow nigan. O ve'emsa machlifa nasa nigan, and then we switch it, o menagnim nigan shal simcha, and then we're singing a nigan of simcha. So he's about to give a, 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 a parish, but I think the pashat pshat is because if you look in a certain sense, it's not completely true because there are, there are some joyous elements in the first part and there are some sad elements in the second part. But generally speaking, it, it matches the tonality of the, of the meaning of the words. Right? For the first part of a Chadaydi, generally we're speaking again of Emek Habacha and Kumitzi Imitoycha Fecha, you know, and Mikdash Melech Ir Malucha, you know, Venimna uh, uh, you know, Sa'ir, that makes reference to the fact that right now the city isn't built and, and so on. And then from the second part, Loise Voshi, it's like, there's already this freedom. Why should you be sad? How can you sing that with a sad, not, I don't mean sad, with a, with a nigan shal dveikos. It, it's meant to be a nigan of, of simcha. Right? We're going to rebuild. We're, oh, v'nimna sa'ir al Okay, that also makes reference to the fact that it isn't built, but we speak about it. It's, it, about, it is, it's about, about to be built. Though. Huh? You have to do something. You have to do something, right. At the beginning, right. it sounds it's like more of an inspiration. It's about moving, steering your emotions. And then the second part is about action. About action. Yamanu small tefreitzi. That's Hashem Taritzi, right. And that could also be, that's another side shot, but also connected. I was saying more from the joy element of it, from the looking forward to the nech, like the Shiva the Nechemta, looking forward to the Nechem element. But Rav Zalmi is saying also the, the Maisa element, which is also connected to, to singing and, and dancing and, and fast. Here he takes a different, a slightly different approach. He says it has to be this way. Ki He says when you're about to stand on the threshold of a new experience of Ruchnias, and each Shabbos, in as much as each Shabbos follows the same thematic patterns, but it's a new Shabbos, brand new. So we have to begin with, with tshuva first, right? And of course, Shabbos is the word tshuva. So we, we had Shirem in the beginning about that. We have to do tshuva first. And it's like you got to got to let go of, of, of all the layers of the week. With all the anxieties and the frustrations and the and the and the opposite of Anuna and 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 the mundanity and and the fear and everything and I, this is the opportunity now with the nigan of Tvekas to let go of all of that. That's the point. To yearn, right? And maybe this is again why it's preceded by Shavasenu Kabel Senu. It was all you remember those last that last stanza was all about the yearning the and 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 the yearning based on all of the ideas that we had learned previously in the in the segment of Anabakayah. So the first part of the Chadaidi is is again, it's that yearning. This is brought about through a nigan of yearning and longing. And once we, we, we merit this, we come out of this, so then, then we're there. We can rise up, and we enter into that exalted realm. Excuse me, and to feel that 
to really feel it. Because the fact that we don't ordinarily feel it is never a raya as to what's actually taking place within us. There are hundreds of thousands of Jews who feel chas v'shalom, rachman al-salam, they feel nothing on Yom Kippur. And that doesn't mean that itzuma shal yayim is not just as real for them as it is for us. So there are spiritual realities taking place all the time. Our job is to align ourselves with what's taking place. The more that we're aware of it, the more that we're, we're, we're not just a spectator on the, you know, in the stands, we're on the field, the more that we're mamish uh, uh, standing up to it, so to speak, and being uh, 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 an active participant, the more that we feel an neshami yaseira. The more that we could feel that extra infusion of neshama. The estchilas ar hashabas, we can feel that light of menucha. That menucha that's, that's synonymous with emuna, That's synonymous with the yishavadas of knowing that I don't run this world. And then not only don't I run it, and is the world not being run, it's being run by an infinite being who everything he does is good. Hashem echad u'shmoy echad l'shem u'lesiferes v'lesihila. Everything is going in such a way that's going to bring about the utmost giloy of his presence, which was the sight of Gullus and the secret of getting back to Eretz Yisrael with the electromagnetic force of the, of the Jewish nation activated as they should be and a world that doesn't conceal Hashem but reveals Him in the deepest way. That's where all of this is heading. That's where all of this is heading. And that's what Shabbos is all about. And what a privilege we get this once a week. Imagine if we got this once a decade, it would already be like amazing. Once a week. Think about that for a second. That's one seventh of your life is spent in Shabbos. Incredible. So fundamental is Shabbos, but not the silly Shabbos, you know, of, of, of an unconscious just experience of a, of a day off when you have a nice dinner, you know, and some special food, you know, and it's not, that's not, not, not the Shabbos we're talking about. We're talking about an activated, like an experiential conscious experience of Shabbos. In as much as I know what it means to be a Jew, I, and I know what it means Shabbos, I know that I cannot be a Jew without Shabbos. I, I can't survive without Shabbos. I can't go more than four days without Shabbos, meaning on either side of my week. Because from Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm drawing energy on the Shabbos to come. And Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is drawing on the energy of Shabbos that was. I, I, can't, I can't go more than three days without, without drawing on the light of Shabbos. Certainly a seven-day week, forget about it. The light of Shabbos coming in. And how much closer we become to that strata of reality that's called the Divine Presence in everything. And that's why at that time, once we've done our tshuva and we mamish do it, if we really, really do the first part of, of, of the Chadaydi, then you have what to dance about the second part. But the, but the people that don't want to dance are the people that didn't want to sing. And the people that don't sing are the people that don't want to dance. The, meaning it's all, it's all for fallen. You understand? It, it's, we're either all in or we're all out. And, and it's a pellet to me, however, who are really be'etzim all out, somehow like shuffle around and make it as if they're somewhat in. It's like, choose, you know. I must choose. Cannot be schmoozing the first part of the Chadaydi and then, and then, you know, so join the circle for this. Like, with what are you dancing? With what are you, you know? It, it's, chap, it's, what do I mean to say? You, you know, you understand what I'm saying. It's, it's a, it's a. Give me some other words to express what I mean to say, because I'm I'm out of words for today. I'm very tired, and I give a number of shirim ready today. <laughs> what what do I mean to say? I mean that we we need to we need to consider what Yiddishkeit is supposed to be, huh? One coincides with another. It's yeah, it's one coincides. It, right, it's a build-up, meaning it's an experience. It's a chavaya. You go to a wedding. It's like, what do you, what do you mean? You're going you're to eat at the shmorg and then, and then, and then you're, you're going to stand outside smoking during the whole chuppah? I mean, like, what? what it's a wedding. It's, it's, you can't have one part without the other. You, you can't have anabakayach without, without l'chadoidi. And you can't have l'chadoidi without, without something that, again, I keep on saying this. I, I understand some of us may actually call it Shabbos dinner, and it could be a cultural thing. I'm not, not getting into that, right? But, but you know, a Shabbos Suda. I'm not saying good night. I'm saying good Shabbos. And it's all one thing. And then, if we're Mama Shabbos to Yidin, then we're Mama Shabbos and Yidin, because the same thing. And we're Mama Shabbos Jews. And if we're Mama Shabbos Jews, then we make brachas properly, etc., there are two ways of viewing halacha. It is either a system of thing 
things that for some strange, bizarre reason God commands us to do, and you just got to do it because God is our our, uh, our our king and we're his, his really unwilling servants. And like we get it, we'll like sacrifice our whole life so that maybe one day we can get Olam Haba, and that's like one way of looking at Allah. Or we can put on the glasses of the Baal Shem Tov, in which case it's all about relationship. Deeper, it's all about intimacy. Deeper, it's all about a transhistorical mission of one nation on a quest to rescue all of humanity. And in so doing, to reveal the light of the divine in his world, to bring about world peace, and to bring about redemption of every human being on the planet, and so on. Now, again, I, I could be crazy. I think it's an easier sell for our children and the next generation to opt for the second pair of glasses than the first pair of glasses. And it's not just me who thinks that way. Hashem thought that way because he sent the Baal Shem Tov into the world for a reason. And he expected us to listen to him far better than we've been listening. So we're making tikkunim. What can we do? A bunch of schleppers, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. But that's so precious. That's so precious. What a privilege. We should become Shabbos to Kiyid and Mamish. Not just on Shabbos. Halavai, also on Shabbos. But the whole week long. The whole week long. Okay, L'chaim. Oh, what a good start. Baruch Hashem. Just starting to open the Sugi of Ah, there's so much to get to. And looking forward. Ezra Hashem is Baruch.